guys. I'm Heather. Welcome to another Homeschool Live presented by the Old School House. Thank you for tuning in today. Today I'll be interviewing Rick Fisher of Math Essentials. And both Rick and I would be extremely grateful if you could take a minute right now and share this video in your timeline. Send it to anyone you can think of who's struggling with teaching their child math. And please comment, like, and feel free to ask questions throughout the interview. And now I'm really looking forward to introducing you today to Rick Fisher. Mr. Fisher is the founder of Math Essentials. He was a math instructor in San Jose, California for over 31 years. Since graduating from San Jose State University with a bachelor's in mathematics, Rick has devoted his time to both teaching and developing unique award-winning math materials. As a teacher each year, approximately one half of his sixth grade students would routinely bypass the seventh grade math program and move directly to a high powered eighth grade algebra program. Rick is a winner of the prestigious Intel Innovations and in Teaching Award. He has developed a highly functional, easy to use, and most importantly, easy to understand mathematics teaching system that produces amazing results. Results that he shares in his books, DVDs, and now a world-class online instructional program, americasmathteacher.com. Many of Rick's best-selling books include online video tutorials, which, which makes for an unbeatable learning experience. Rick's award-winning math materials are based on exciting, tested teaching strategy that will produce dramatic results for students. He's literally transformed the math experiences for students worldwide. Thank you so much for joining me today, Rick. Good morning, everybody, all you homeschool moms and dads, and hopefully some students are out there too. But I am uh, Rick Fisher, uh, 31 years in the classroom. That's a long time. I hate to hear that number sometimes. It's, uh, it's been a while. But uh, I, uh, I wrote my first book in 1998. And uh, having uh, a lot of people tell me I should because the kids that went through my classes did really well when they uh, went from sixth grade into middle school. A lot of times we would... Uh, have over half of our kids make that transition, skipping the seventh grade and going right into uh, algebra. And you, you do want to know that the materials work. And that's the whole idea behind my materials. I uh, did it, wrote all the books with a mindset that all kids can learn math. And one, one other thing, our district used to have a math contest for the sixth graders every year. Uh, first year they had it, we went and uh, won the team and won most of the individual uh, awards. And the second year, same thing. Third year, it happened again, and it, it was my kids. I mean, they just got so pumped about math that that's how they responded. The fourth year, the district said, well, this time we're gonna be doing it a little bit different. We're gonna have a gifted and talented category, and then we're gonna have just standard uh, students and, you know, to me, every kid is gifted and talented if mm -hmm. they can find out what they're really good at. I think everybody has one thing at least that they can do better than anything else anybody else can do. But anyway, they had the contest for the two categories and we won both of them. <laughs> so wow. I'm just saying it, it is a system that does work. And that was the last year they had the math contest, by the way. But uh, anyway, I have been working with a lot of homeschoolers, uh, public schools, private schools. We uh, just donated uh, 6,000 copies to various uh, correctional institutions throughout the country. And it's been kind of tough uh, teaching in, in those institutions. Uh, they're just starting now to be able to use uh, video tutorials where they can block uh, for the students and they can just go to certain sites. But uh, it's really been fun and exciting. And uh, I just wanted to show you a little bit about what makes our materials different and how you can best use them and uh, I know that right now I talk to so many kids, high school, college, parents, this pandemic has really made it tough for a lot of people. Uh, employment, uh, the illness itself, education, people losing their jobs. It, it's really a difficult time. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, our program can take some of the pressure off as far as math and make sure that the kids uh, don't get behind. And math is one of those subjects, too. You fall a little bit behind, a little bit more. Pretty quick, it snowballs, and you end up with a student that just is really turned off and uh, has no desire to be involved in math. And it is really an important subject. I'll just say a couple of words, then we can maybe go to some slides. But 
Uh, success in algebra is what my goal is for all my students. And mm -hmm. we do have an algebra program, but there are some specific skills that every student needs to be successful in, in algebra. And just briefly, those skills are in three clusters. The first is the whole numbers. Obviously, you have to have a real strong command of whole numbers. And then you've got to have your decimals, percents, fractions, uh, positive and negative, and then some geometry and some measurement. And if you can master those topics, you're going to be successful in algebra. And that does open the floodgates for more advanced math, more advanced tech classes. And you just virtually, you, you talk to your kids and, and some of them may have goals already. And a lot of those professions and things they want to do, do require a background in algebra. So it is really important that uh, this subject is one that kids master. So if uh, we could maybe see the first slide there, that would be great. There's our book one. And the idea behind this is it, it's for the elementary kids, say grades four or five. The next book up, it's book two. A lot of the same topics, except a little bit more advanced. Then we have a uh, pre-algebra program and our final book right now is No Nonsense Algebra, which is right there. I want to show you a little bit about how the pages are set up. So if we can go back to that first uh, graphic with the page. Uh, there you go, right there. You look uh, carefully at this. I call this the perfect math lesson plan because it has a little bit of everything. And this is the consistent format of the book. If you see up there on the left corner, those little wheels, what those are, are little drills speed drills, one for addition and one for multiplication. So many kids don't have that instant recall and it is it's important to have that. It sure makes things a lot easier. So there's a little drill every day. That little section to the right on top, it's a review section and it's just a little review. All the topics are cycled throughout the program. Uh, I've seen so many classrooms where kids would, for example, have some fraction work in September and never see a fraction again until June. And then people wonder, how come they don't know fractions? You know, so you have to review topics all the time. This little section in the middle is the practice problems. There's usually a little helpful hint of some kind and then maybe some work that they can do just to get an idea of how to set it up. And then you've got the regular assignment with a couple of sample questions. And down there at the bottom, you have real life situations. That's, that's so important. You know, what good is math if you can't put it to good use? And so there's a little bit of that every day too. You've also got chapter quizzes. You've got final exams in the back and it just really gives the kids those well-rounded uh, experiences. And again, we want to make sure that they have that whole number, fractions, decimals, positive and negative, geometry, measurement, have those foundational skills. I remember one time at a conference, there was a gentleman, he was looking, he thumbing through the book too, which is the next level up, kind of shaking his head. And I said, uh, what, what are you shaking your head? He just says, you know, just looking at this book, he said, and if the kids came to me and knew all the stuff in this book, they would be successful in my algebra class. Wow. And so that's an important thing too. I also had, uh, I lived in Las Gatas, Silicon Valley, I we're moving our business to San Antonio, Texas, but uh, I had a college professor at Mission College right there in the middle of Intel and all of these businesses who would order a class set of that book too. Wow. For his freshman algebra class, because these kids were coming up, uh, didn't understand percentages, fractions, couldn't do fractions. And then they were supposed to be able to do rational expressions in algebra. So it's something that is missing in a lot of kids, uh, algebraic and math diets, I guess you could say it that way. But uh, this is a specific skill book, Geometry, and it's 80 pages. Uh, I've just come out with a new program and it's called Basic Math Skills Rescue. And it's designed to help some of the kids, adults, who may really need to brush up on math and get that algebra readiness. So many parents too that have uh, been forced to either find a new job because of, they were laid off or are thinking of going back to school. This uh, uh, math skills rescue covers all of those critical foundations of algebra. And it was just released about four or five days ago on Amazon. Oh, wow. Okay. 
So you can all check all of our titles on Amazon. We also have our website, mathessentials.net. And then for people that like just a complete online experience, grades four through algebra, we have mathandalgebra.com now too. Uh, one other thing, I just, uh, it's been a few months now, but we now have Spanish editions for most of our titles as well as bilingual. And uh, I'm from the Bay Area, California. A lot of uh, a lot of kids that just haven't had enough English background can really get a boost from the, that uh, situation where we have a bilingual side by side format. So that's something to consider too. If you have, know of people or are in that situation yourself, where the English language skill isn't quite up to to work in some of these other books that uh, are just in English and. And by the way, the books too are just, there are no frills, no flush, uh, and no, no distractions basically. Right. And uh, one of the things that's kind of interesting, this was back in the 90s, but the, uh, the government did a big uh, research project on math and what's working, what's not working. And the country that was always doing the best as far as international best, uh, math scores back then was uh, Singapore. And they pointed out in that, uh, that well, it's kind of a big research project that Singapore also has the world's skinniest math textbooks. So it's just kind of that no fluff, get right down to the business. And that's kind of the approach that I've tried to take too. So maybe we can go to that uh, next pair of slides for the algebra, the two that are side by side. I was going to show people a little bit about those. And that's the cover for the no-nonsense algebra. Complete algebra. By the way, they all have video tutorials. A uh, couple suggestions for videos, how to use them. Uh, I've had some kids that would just click on the video and watch the video. I really am a strong believer when you have a video experience, you should have a piece of paper, preferably lined and better yet, graph paper, yeah. pencil, and work right along with me, the instructor, the instructor, excuse me, so that you not you don't just see it, but you hear it, and you're going to do it. You can even uh, taste math. And I, somebody asked me, "What do you mean by that?" Well, you know, when you learn your fractions, you might want to do a cooking project where you have ratios, proportions. You can uh, use units, but that experience on the video tutorial. A lot better learning if you take a pencil paper and work right along with the instructor. So the tutorials, do they come along with, um, if yeah. you purchase the book, you just go onto your website and you can access them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a password right there. I have, since the pandemic started, I have made my videos, by the way, available to anybody that wants to use them. The passwords are right there in red. For the uh, algebra, you go to nononsensealgebra.com and there's a video library too. So kids that don't have the books, they can use the video tutorial and adults also. But uh, they are available and uh, just click, find the video you'd like to use and go through them. But okay. uh, we have a couple questions. Yeah. I'm going to go to this one because it's related to what you're talking about. Um, Joel is wondering or Joel is wondering are there tutorials for each lesson? Basically, there are. Now, just for example, let's take book one. You might have a double digit long division, maybe two or three lessons, and there is going to be one tutorial that leads you through the, the process. But by and large, each one of the lessons has a video tutorial. Okay. And Autumn was wondering, she says she wants to purchase your book. Um, she says, my daughter is a rising sixth grader. Would you recommend mastering essential math book two or pre-algebra? Well, it, it depends. Uh, first of all, the, the books have the whole numbers, fractions, decimals, percents, integers, problem solving, basic geometry. If she's really just beginning in those topics, it might be good to start with book one. Kids that have had a little more experience, maybe uh, you know sixth graders might want to go to book two. And I also say, you know, that uh, it's, it's a good idea rather than go to the book and find specific topics. I say go right back to the first lesson and just decide, OK, you may, maybe your child's had some whole numbers. Just say, look, we're just going to go through this. And if it goes fine, we move right on to the next lesson. Uh, if there are a few gaps, sometimes you're going to come to a lesson where you want to spend a little bit more time. Maybe go back, work through the video tutorial again. But uh, these books 
have those pages set up so that there's going to be a little bit of review on each lesson. And sometimes that review is going to be the time that the child says, oh, I got it now. I finally get this. So that, that format really does lend itself to mastery. And you've also got the chapter test you can use as pre-tests. You can use okay. other tests at the end. So there's a lot of ways to assess. But you're going to find, too, that some of the times that, uh, that the kids might be a little bit stuck on something, they go back, watch that video again, work through that video with me. Uh, they, they pick things up and they definitely make the progress they need to. Okay. We did have the question, do you have a placement test? So you just suggest going through and... Yeah, there are tests uh, after each chapter. You can use that as a pretest in our chapter. Uh, there are tests in the back, too. So you can have a pretest, post-test situation. Okay. Uh, Joel was also wondering, is this a standalone cu curriculum? Lots of parents do use it, yes, for, for a standalone. And as an example, uh, on the no nonsense algebra, I've had a lot of people that have used that for their base algebra uh, course. And they take the shade assessments and do really well. In, in the 90 percentiles, you know, up there really high. And uh, the, the algebra and a couple of the other titles uh, have uh, won awards to the Practical Homeschooling Magazine, another homeschool source for a lot of people. They were award winners in algebra and basic math, too. But uh, they really do pr produce those results. And that's like I say, that's the whole basis. All kids can be successful in math. And that was the mindset that I had when I wrote each and every one of these titles. But uh, let me take a little time on that, that those two algebra pages just to give you a couple tips too. If sure. I can. Yeah. The, you can see the format up there. The left upper is the new lesson and the, the, the child or the student's been through the video tutorial. When you see those sample problems there, a suggestion I, I, I have is, for example, the, the number is far hard for me to see the, the number of the problem, but I like to cover up the steps and have your child on a piece of paper Copy the problem down and just think to themselves, what would the first step be? If they can make a, a good guess or a, a good conjecture, you know, write it down and then uncover it. See if they can do that on their own. Rather than just look at that example and kind of scan through it, copy it down, cover the steps, and try to do it on a piece of binder paper or graph paper by themselves first. And if they have to peek, you know, to, okay, I'm not quite sure, uncover that first step. Okay, I got it. And then write it down. Same thing. What's the next step going to be? If you have to look, look. But that's going to be a lot better learning experience if you do it in that way. And again, second uh, page there, that most of the algebra page uh, uh, assignments are two pages. You can see the, the problems over there. And then there's always a review, too. So this is, uh, the, by the way, the... Uh, Table of contents are all very detailed. So if you do have to go back and find a topic that you might want to have some extra practice on, very easy to find topics. And there's a math resource center in the back of all the books too. Glossary, tables, things like that. Perfect. And um, one more thing I'm <laughs> just showing. No, absolutely. Uh, I do have a new book out and it's uh, about a year now, but it's specifically for adults. It's called Math Refresher for Adults. And if you, th these are some of the reasons right next to the blue section why people might want to use it. If you uh, are just rusty, you're going to be taking a job interview with a math placement for some job. Maybe you want to help your child, but you're a little bit rusty. You can look up any topic. There's going to be a real short just a real short refresher. It's not a textbook, but a refresher. And you have access to the video. So you could watch as a parent, watch the videos, work through them and then help your child. You know, a lot of, a lot of parents are probably really pretty good in, in uh, math. They haven't used it for 10 or 15 years. It makes right. a difference. You get pretty rusty. And uh, so this is kind of the answer for someone like that. And it can be used for a lot of various purposes in addition to helping your kids. The, the new book that is going to be coming out, it's out now, if you can see it, it's called the Math Skills Refresher. And this covers all those critical foundational skills. It's actually uh, six books in one. And it really makes it more cost effective rather than having to buy six specific skill books. This has, excuse me, four of them. It has everything. There are two volumes, but that. Uh, this, I think, is going to be really helpful to a lot of people who have been, uh, you know, affected by uh, distance learning. It's not working and just uh, falling behind. 
frustrating uh, themselves with uh, some of the math work. So that's not necessarily for parents trying to catch up. That's for anybody. That's um, for very for students. Yeah, great okay. through pre-algebra, and then the next step after this would be the no-nonsense algebra. Okay. Yeah, and uh, that's it's it is I know a frustrating time, and uh, hopefully that can help a lot of people out to get where they really need to be in their math. So we do have a few more questions. Sure. Yeah. Let's. Uh, um, can you provide a link for the math book rescue? So this is that's the one you were just showing. That's you said that's in you know, right, right now we are it isn't on our website, but if you go to Amazon, they are available on Amazon now. And uh, we are having having them printed up ourselves uh, at this moment. We'll have them available. Uh, it's going to be a few days, but we, we have to place those on the website. But uh, it's just basic math skills rescue Richard W. Fisher. And uh, they were put up three days ago, I think. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And those, uh, again, all, all of the titles here uh, give you the free access to the video tutorials. And by the way, tell uh, your friends about those. Uh, anybody that's in need of some help for any topic, uh, they're welcome to use those video tutorials also. That's and wonderful. We appreciate that. Nobody has to purchase a book to use this. Autumn was wondering, would we need a geometry book in addition to math book two? Uh, there's a full chapter on geometry. Uh, some some kids see something at first time, they got it. I wasn't like that. I had to see it a couple times, get a little bit more review. So we do have specific skill books, one of which is geometry. But for the most part, you're going to go through that geometry chapter. And again, the, the, the topics are going to be recycled through the rest of the book. And so you're going to get some review. But uh, it, it kind of depends, you know. The, the big thing that that uh, teacher that I told you about at Mission uh, Junior College, the, the big problem that his kids had were fractions. They just really got bogged down and didn't understand them. So he would make sure that he started the year off with that and then got into the algebraic topics. So it kind of depends on your child. Right. So I would love to know your opinion on what you see right now is the biggest challenge when it comes to te teaching math. Well, just the fact that kids aren't attending school, sometimes they don't have good materials at home. But uh, homeschoolers, to me, I think have the best situation because, number one, you have people that want something that's really going to work and something that's fairly easy for the parent as well as the child to understand and go through on their own. There's a little bit more independence yeah. and you can tailor the, the program to your child's needs. I know that some kids are visual. I'm visual. My wife, auditory, you know, you give her directions. Me, I got to see it. And your, your kids are the same. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses as far as their, their learning difficulty sometimes. And some are stronger in one area than the other. But uh, you basically, again, uh, it, it's kind of, kind of preachy about it. But if, if kids get those critical foundations, become algebra ready, that's algebra. That just opens so many opportunities as far as your education is concerned. They're going to be able to take more advanced math, STEM classes, technical classes. It just sets them up for success. Sometimes my nephews uh, did not go to college. They're, they're both craftsmen and they're making a lot, a lot of money. And they 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 took certain parts of math that they needed. But right. if our, a child does have intentions to go to college, you're going to have to have certain requirements that uh, they they take care of. And one of those is is an Algebra 1 class, so that right. they have access to other other things. But uh, anyway, I have uh, I think we have some great materials that can help you achieve that, too. So absolutely. So um, one of our viewers has gone to your website. And she is looking for the English version. Um, I just scroll down further. Yeah. Okay. So just, just scroll yeah, just, down and you should find it. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And then uh, don't forget the math and algebra.com. That's uh, another site that's been out for about six months. And it's basically the same program, except uh, everything is uh, online. Okay. So if you could give parents one piece of advice right now, what would it be? I think the best thing anybody can do for a student is to somehow make sure that they achieve success. In other words, if they can be, feel successful about what they're doing, they're going to want to learn more. You can kind of light that fire, in other words. So if your child has struggled, say, in math, 
do your best to make them feel successful, praise them for their efforts, and they're going to want to learn more. The kids that I talk to have, have gotten behind so many of them that they're just frustrated and they don't even know where to start. So right. if you can start slowly, make them feel success, and they're going to want to learn more. That's, uh, I think that's really one of the big reasons that my kids, when I was in the classroom, did so well. They, uh, they just got excited about math. And if you right. can you know, light that fire and make them excited about it, they're going to learn. It's not so much trying to just pour knowledge in. It's trying to get them excited and they can figure out that knowledge on their own. And I think that's what's so great about your method, your strategy, is you don't have, like you said, all the frills, all the colors and everything to distract the kids. It just gets right to the point and they can go to the next book and you have everything you need to get. There's a goal. It's not just getting through a worksheet. We need to get this done because this is school and we need to get it done. But you have a goal. You want these kids to get to the algebra, to succeed in algebra. And um, I think that's very important. And yeah, kids get really that. Good. They understand, okay, I have a goal. I have a purpose. And mm -hmm. when they're doing their schoolwork, it helps them. You know, the age old question, what do I need this for? You know, it helps them understand, okay, you do need this. This is going to help you. So another thing, that's a statement you just made. Uh, interesting story uh, i was giving one of my this is a sixth grade class but i was giving them a little flavor of quadratic equations and i had this one kid real nice student and everything he kind of teased me he'd go okay mr Fish, when am i going to uh, use this quadratic equation i said you're going to take that you're going to use it in about five minutes <laughs> and he had a basketball under his, his arm and i said you know when you go out there and you shoot that basketball the arc that that ball takes is the graph of a quadratic equation and it's a, called a parabola but if you can get that angle of the arc perfect, it increases the percentage that your shot is going to go in. You kind of think if it's a flat arc, it's going to just bounce off the rim. But anyway, that kid got so excited about that, he and his buddy wanted to set up a, an experiment where they could go out there and shoot baskets just regularly, keep track of a certain number, and then do some research on that, that arc, that parabola and apply that. And they, they went into this extensive uh, experiment and they did improve their free throw. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you kind of have to, as a parent, have a bag of tricks, you know, I mean, there are certain ways, uh, geometry, you know, my daughter painted her room. We let, you know, paint it and uh, pick the colors and all that, but she had to figure out how much paint and what the cost was going to be. So geometry mm -hmm. right there. She had to measure all of the walls. And then we uh, we taught, we said, what about the, those? She said, oh, the windows. I guess I don't want to paint the windows. <laughs> yeah. So you, if you can come up with some, some real life situations and show your kids how it's going to affect them later, that's another big plus. Yeah. And if, uh, I mean, it's kind of like this, too. If you, your child wants to become a doctor, they're going to have to pass algebra. I mean, there are yeah. certain things you have to do, certain hoops you have to jump through. And yeah. uh, that can kind of make it meaningful, too. But, uh, again, every child is different, and nobody knows your child like you do. That's right. And uh, that's, that's the way I look at it. That's what I tried to find out when I had, uh, you know, teacher conferences a little bit about what makes the kid – Tick as far as you know other interests besides school a lot of times you don't get to see that yeah as a teacher uh it, it's fun to just find out from the parents a little bit more about what uh, your child has as far as a future plan well it looks like our parents here are really excited about what you have to offer um autumn is wondering is there an answer key included with book two uh yeah, well, all the books have answers in the back yeah they're self-contained yeah, everything is self-contained, and uh, you don't have to have a uh, – just go to the site and click on videos, and that will take you to uh, the book one, book two, pre-algebra. You can access any of those. If you want to go ahead into the algebra, maybe you have a fifth grade or you want to do some algebra, go to uh, No Nonsense Algebra. Up in the upper right-hand corner, there's a little uh, video library button, and uh, – got access to everything feel free anytime to uh, call me i love to talk to people when i can you know pick up and uh, i try to answer all uh, emails too and I was, I was, we were talking before uh, we started here i used to have a 
a young man from New York. I'm in California. He'd call me at 5 a.m. in the morning about twice a month. He didn't quite get the fact that when it's five o'clock out here, it's, you know, eight o'clock or so. Back <laughs> New York. But it was kind of funny. He was pretty enthusiastic about his uh, math. Any, anybody will call the, the instructor at eight o'clock in the morning, New York time. <laughs> That's pretty excited about math. But uh, anyway, I always love teaching it and I love to hear success stories. Uh, one other thing, too, I, you might go to Math Essentials. Uh, Facebook, I posted a letter that I got from a mom who, uh, whose son uh, has autism. And I've had a lot of special ed teachers that had you know, special needs kids, uh, autism, dyslexia, things like that. They've had great success. And I don't really know exactly what it is, but the flow of our pages are kind of uh, logical and you don't have all of the frills and all the the graphs and all of the factoids and everything. So it makes yeah. it pretty simple to stay focused for kids that need help in doing so. All right. So we have your Facebook page and your website again. Could you repeat that one more time for anybody yeah. who wants to head over there? We have uh, No Nonsense Algebra as a separate site. We have mathandalgebra.com and then we have www.mathessentials.net. And uh, phone number, email, everything is right there. And uh, I've enjoyed the talk. A little, a little nervous. It's like being on TV. You know? <laughs> I, I love uh, hearing from uh, homeschool parents. So feel free to give me a call. A lot of times I'll get an email and somebody will ask, what do you suggest you know, for my son? And they write a paragraph. I just say, hey, just call me up and let's talk for a while because that, it's a lot easier to uh, focus in on exactly what's been learned, you know, what, uh, what kind of motivates and, and what might be a good level to start. So that's, that's fine. Sometimes I can't always pick up, but you know, I'll get back to you. Promise. Well, that's great. That's great that you make yourself available. We appreciate that. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you everybody for watching us. If you're new to homeschooling, go and check out the homeschoolingprimer.com for free information on how to get started. If you're looking for a curriculum site, head over to schoolhouseteachers.com and check out the deals going on there. And uh, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time on Homeschool Live. Goodbye. Thank you very much.